this is a story of my fascination with, I think, the most unique aircraft that has ever flown. When I was in high school, I found a book called Warplanes of the Third Reich um, that had just about every airplane that the Germans ever made during um, the war period of World War II. And as I was thumbing through it, I found this flying wing. And I was like, this thing could not have existed, but uh, it did. And ever since I had seen it, I was like, wow, this thing is really, really interesting. So as a modeler, I searched for a long time looking for plans for this plane because I know how to scratch build. And I decided that I wanted to try to make something that flies, that looks like it. And I came across a set of plans. Uh, the only ones at that time were made by a guy named Jack Bale in California. These plans were for a sloper, but it showed that it could be converted to ducted fan. And so I bought the plans. I talked to Mr. Bale via email and phone. He seemed to be a pretty nice guy. And uh, so I bought a set of plans and that's where my journey started. At the time, the technology for brushless motors and ducted fans and all that stuff was still in its infancy. So I kind of just started building it with the intention of putting something in it eventually. And one thing leads to another and life gets in the way and things just, you know, work stops and things get in the way. And so I stopped working on it and then I worked on it again in 2007. Now it's been almost 20 years. And I'm ashamed of myself for not finishing this airplane, especially with the technology we have today. So I'm going to start working on this thing again, and I'm going to finish it because it deserves to fly. Now, one thing I must add about this particular plan set is things do not quite line up like they should. There's been a lot of people complaining about these plans, that they're garbage, that the plane has never flown, and... Uh, Mr. Bale sucked as a draftsman, but you got to understand uh, when you scratch build things have to be adjusted and you have to use your head and These were a really good place to start as far as I'm concerned There's a lot of controversy about what happened to him and some people say that uh, his estate was uh, liquidated very very hastily and he had a lot of sets of plans, but you know, people did complain about um, his plans and how they were just junk. But considering the year that they were penned and the subjects that were penned, I think he did a really good job. So for all those out there who criticize these plans, I've built this airplane. And when you see this video, you'll see the intricacies. But... You know, it's going to be a quite and quite an endeavor to build this airplane from these plans, but uh, it can be done, and this plane will fly. And I just think that uh, in an age of uh, CNC and computer this and 3D printing, uh, of course these planes don't stand up, but they were the only thing that was available at the time. Like I said, so just bear in mind if you decide to try to endeavor on this little project, you're going to run into a lot of trouble but you'll see the places uh, in this video where these plans were lacking. I think it'll fly very well, actually. I just have to work out a few problems it has. So keep in mind that scratch building is not perfect and it can be very enjoyable once uh, the project is done. And this is gonna be the crowning jewel of my little uh, scratch building career once it's finished. So enjoy the video. All right, that was rudely interrupted. Here's the Horton. As it sits, been sitting for a while. There. All the way over. I'm gonna call him. But the problem is, is that one of the tips is too low. It's a quarter inch washout, and the other one is half inch. So I gotta bring one of them up. And in order to do that, I put these corner triangles on here, and then I have a laser that'll go on that, and then just flatten it out. It's flat on the bottom, 
and then keep that flat on a nice flat board and then put the lasers at the tip and see where they fall and a marking and then I'll get an exact reading and then I was just going to um, you just wet the wing that's all I gotta do is wet it wet it with a sponge and then put it in a jig I have a jig for it at the tips and then just let it dry for a week and then glass it glass that's top the side that's moved and then let it sit again alrighty then here we are this is my Jack Bale Horton. It was started in 2000, the year 2000. It's been sitting for quite a while. I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. I'm ashamed of myself, like I said. It um, took quite a while to get it going. There's a lot of things wrong with the plans. But, move around the side here, I'll give you a quick description. <clears throat> Alright, what I did was I decided to make it the V2. No big nacelles, okay? This is the actual version that flew, and it was considered to be what was called the HO9, H-O-I-X, I like to call it. And the other problem I had with it was, um, besides the... Uh, should I say the uh, elevators, elevator flaps, they were not correct on the plans. We'll get to that in a minute. First, the other thing that was wrong was one of the ribs didn't match up, but when you scratch build, basically you, you got to adjust. That's just the way it is. And... Um, so I just went forward and forward and forward, and the technology of the day was not very good as far as the fan units. Um, so it's just been sitting, and now with LiPo batteries and brushless motors, this thing is, it deserves to fly. It really does. It won't take that much really to get it finished, I don't think. Now, I don't know how effective they'll be, but they should be pretty cool. Maybe we could use them for some sort of a yaw, or at least just for spoilers. We'll see how it reacts. But I actually made these from, or designed these from another set of Horton plans, which I, cor I, I collect Horton plans. The only ones I don't have are Gary Heathcoats, but I did buy a canopy from him and I uh, told him about my project and he was pretty excited. But life gets in the way and you know things just don't get completed. So let's take a look at the canopy. It is correct. This canopy is correct. Oh, and it looks much better. Wow. Hopefully I won't have to build it up too much on the side to make it work, but it is cool. That is a cool looking canopy. I'll probably have to knock that out in the center headrest, but who cares? Uh, much better. I at my shop and the compressor makes ungodly noise. So this is the hatch for the batteries. Plenty of room for it everywhere. Plenty, plenty, plenty of room. Can't really see too well. A little, little dark up here, but plenty of room. I could stick probably god 10,000 MA batteries in there all the way to the front. That's what's really cool. I made designed it so they could go all the way to the front, so all the weight could be shifted to the front. Flying wings are inherently tail heavy. Um, let's see what else. Um, I made the edges of the chine here out of uh, like a ABS triangle stock because to bring everything to a point, and it seemed to work pretty good because everything was about an eighth of an inch, and it's really close. Maybe a little bit of putty will probably help it out, but. That's really cool. Like I said, I had to actually make these after the wing was constructed because the geometry of everything according to plans was totally off and wrong.
totally off. You can't build this airplane according to the plans for the ailerons, elevator, flaps, whatever you want to call flaperons, whatever, and have everything come out correctly. It will not. I still have to make these, and I have not made these yet because um, I have to get the wings straight. Once the wing is straight, then I'll make the ailerons because there's a quarter inch of washout on each tip. So should be okay. It shouldn't be too hard. I had the plane on this table, and there's an Alberta time. There's what's left of the jig, but that table's warped, so I have to get a new one because it's been sitting in the sun for eons. So let's turn it over, and we'll get a, another description of what's on the bottom. Here's the bottom. All the servos are in the leading edge of the wing to bring all weight as far forward as possible. Think about those things. Nye rods, eh, not the best, but it will work. That's just for the flaps. The rest are actually on bell cranks. No, the ailerons are on bell, bell cranks, I'm sorry. And the, the flaps are nye rods because I didn't want to run more bell cranks. So, no gear. It's not going to have any landing gear. This is a discoloration over time due to the alkalinity, I think, of the super glue and baking soda that I used on it. Another drag rudder, but I haven't put the cap on it. So everything's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. Just needs to be finalized and shaped and glassed. Let's see if I can get the hatches open. Okay, hatch is open now. Everything held in with magnets, which is pretty cool. All hand built, light as possible. Going to be glassed double layer on the bottom because it's going to be landing on its belly in the grass. This was a real hodge modge podge of just to get the thing to work. I could put a battery in the center too if I wish. Um, receiver and stuff can go up front here. These are the fan bays. You can't really see them too well. Yeah, there's a good thing. That's good. This was made for uh, 90 millimeter Wematex. Now everybody I've talked to have said that the 90 millimeter fans were too big. And I don't know, I don't know, but I, I'm not sure of what I'm going to use yet. I've been shopping for fans. Everybody says everybody who builds these planes builds them with 70 millimeters, but this plane was originally designed for Cress RK740 gas. And I had one of those, and that is a four inch, I think, or four and a half or four and a quarter inch fan, I think is like 90 millimeter. I could look on my ruler, but I don't remember exactly. And that's big. So I'm worried about it being able to suck enough CFM through the inlets, and it might be detrimental to run 90s. There's a Chinese company that makes 80s that look pretty cool. I think the 70s, I just have a feeling the 70s are going to be too small. I'm not sure. It's a big airplane, but it does have two engines, so I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll see. And this is the... I could have put landing gear on it if I wanted to. I didn't want to go through the complexity. I did build it so that it would accept it. I did. So I could always knock the bottom off and put gear in it if I wish. But I probably will not. And that's why the whole center section here was left open. Because that landing gear for the nose is huge. So then I'd have to knock all this out. But everything is Swiss cheesed. It's pretty light as it sits. I think it was like three and a half pounds. Believe it or not, it's light. And I hate to, hate to crack it once I get the fly because it would be a heck of a job to fix it. So that is pretty much it. And I have to correct this. This has got some wavy in the balsa. It's pretty thin. See my finger going through. I won't be able to. That's not compatible with me. So I have to fix that. But it is all in all a very cool airplane, and it's pretty much scale, it is, it's pretty much scale. So, thanks for watching my video. Get ready for 300 pictures of its construction.
check back periodically to see the updates and the further construction that is going on. If you have any plans of Jack Bales, especially the Horton glider models, the Horton 4 or the Horton 6, please, please contact me. I've been trying to find these forever. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.